Rescue Quartzite, home of the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's uh, put on by a guy named Bob Wells. That's cheap RV living. If you're into tiny house living or van life living or whatever, Bob's the guy to like get information from. But, um, you know, I've been, been trying to rack my brain coming up with stuff to talk about as far as, uh, you know, I, like as far as the channel is concerned. I, I want to continue putting stuff out, but... You know, with me just going back and forth between California, there's not a whole lot that changes. So I've kind of got a routine down and, and everything, and, and where I stop, what I do. And I've, I figured out all the places where fuel is the cheapest, and that's what I do. Um, you know, and I, I fill up where I, where I need to fill up and everything. The truck's back, obviously, so. But I've already put out two videos about that. Well, a one video about that, so. Um, she's running fine. This, she's not losing oil. She doesn't seem to be having any issues. Oil pressure's good. Temp's all good. I mean, everything's really doing pretty well. Even though I have this intermittent check engine light, it's, it's not on, so that's good. Um, so I thought I would tell you guys about uh, my greatest uh, road trip stories. I love, I love road trips. And, and the thing was, when I before I was a truck driver, you could usually find me about 200 miles away from home on any given day. So if I got off of work and was frustrated, or if I got done doing something, I would put, I'd put, you know, I'd fill up the tank on my car and just go for a drive. And I would, I would put 400 miles on it. And I, more than once, would work a full day, eight hour day, and then go drive for eight hours. Because I just love to drive that much. And uh, so I thought I'd, I would share with you guys, like, the three greatest road trips I've ever been on. And, uh. So, this one I'm going to talk to you about is going to be the, uh, the first greatest road trip I ever went on. And I'm going to try to condense it as much as possible because I, I, I think this is like a 20 or 30 minute story. So, there's this may be chapters of like, you know, I may get to 10 minutes and be like, alright, tune in next week for blah, blah, blah. But, um, we're going to, we're going to start. So, let's get started. Um, my sister, uh, this one involves my sister and I. I've got, they all involve family, but this one involves my sister, and uh, my sister worked for the Rent Fair in Waxahachie, Texas, and she had gotten an offer to go and work at the Renaissance Festival in New York State, which was in the Harriman Forest near Tuxedo, New York, and we, at the time, my father was killed when I was five at work. And, and we all got uh, trust funds, small trust funds, but, you know, they, they weren't million dollars. They were, you know, uh, I think I got 30, and my sister got about 30, and my, my brother got about 32. So, um, and so we would get, like, increments of it. So I got, you know, first year I got eight, and, you know, it was for four years or whatever. So it wasn't, like, real big, but my sister got her first uh, check for her trust fund. Uh, got all cleared up and everything, Get her, gets her first check. And that's the same, it happens right around the time that she's getting ready to go to New York. So she decides that uh, she needs to buy a car. Well, I, I, you know, being the car guy that I am, knew, knew a couple of different people that, you know, had cars available. Knew a friend, had an extended cab, like 95 Chevy truck. So again, it was two-wheel drive, it was a 95 Chevy truck. My sister needed a truck. It was a perfect truck. Well taken care of, 65,000 miles on it. The guy barely drove right? Nope, that's not what she wants. She wanted a four-wheel drive suburban. I'll show you a picture of the suburban. So, um, she wanted a four-wheel, a four-by-four suburban. So I knew some guys in the car business and uh, called them up, told them what I was looking for. And they said, well, we'll call around and see what we can find. And uh, we'll call our friends and see if we can find anything. I said, okay. So finally, they called me back and they, they found a truck, right? Right within my sister's price range. And the price range was uh, it was fifty five hundred for the truck, and it was an eighty nine GMC Suburban four x four, which uh, I, like I said, I put a picture out. That's I own the truck now, but at the time, my sister was buying the truck. So we go, and, and she's got her cash in hand. It's the day she's leaving. Okay, so if there's any advice I give you that you take to heart, please. Don't, for the love of God, buy a car the day you're leaving on a 1,600-mile trip, okay? And I'll tell you why in a, in a little bit. But, uh, so we go to this car lot, she picks it up and everything, and we immediately had to go put tires on. And, and they're not regular tires, they're 32-inch tires, off-road tires. And so we had to go put tires on. 
Well, tires are, you know, are, you know, what was it, like $500 worth of tires. So, or $700 worth of tires immediately, you know. So, now we're up to like, now she's up to like 6200 And, you know, what she has left is basically for gas. So, I'm like, okay, like, you know, I, I had a job at the time that I was trying to take care of. Like, I was going to, and, and I'm trying to be a responsible, like, learning how to be a responsible adult. I was 19 or 20 at the time this happened. So, uh, and my sister comes in, and she starts, you know, into the house. She starts packing all of her stuff up, like, throwing it in the truck. I'm like, okay, who's going to be your co-driver? Like, you know, where are you guys going to stop? Where's your first, you know, first night you're going to stop? Well, you know, being the oldest, I'm protective. So, I'm like, where, where's your first stop? Like, oh, no, we're, we're not we're not getting a hotel room. Well, what do you mean? You're going to sleep in the truck all night? Like, that's going to be uncomfortable. No, we're not going to we're not gonna sleep. We're just going to drive straight through you're going to drive 1,600 miles straight through? Yeah, yeah, we'll be okay. He, he says we're going to stop and take power naps at, like, you know, at rest areas. And it's like, but you're going to be by yourself. Well, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to have to figure it out. Like, this sounds like a really bad idea. So, I, I suddenly felt like my sister was going to die. I didn't want my sister to die. And so I got in. I, I decided I was going. I had to be at work that night, but I decided... My, I didn't want my sister to die, so I'm going to go with her. So, I grab a bag and throw all my stuff in this bag. And, you know, pillows, blankets, whatever I think I might need. I throw it all in this bag. A couple, you know, a couple of changes of clothes. And, and off we go, you know. And we get, you know, I, we get down to the Renaissance Fair. And, and they're having to help this guy that they're going to go work for in New York. Kind of pack up or whatever. We're waiting for him to pack up. So he gets all, you know, he gets all of his stuff packed up and everything and in the trailer, and we leave. Well, while we're there, my sister meets this guy. His name was Ethan, I think, or Ian. Ian it was like Eon. It was like Ion, I O N. And he called, I think it was his name was Ian. Ugh, didn't like that guy. So anyway, so Ian, like, my sister meets this guy and is, you know, infatuated with him, and he's like, like some hippie type and decides that you know he's gonna throw all costs in the wind he's gonna go with it. okay so now it's my sister and me and this guy Ian in my sister's suburban and we're heading out and so we make the first trip to uh, to uh, we get so we start out we, we're heading for uh, New York and we follow this guy and we finally we ended up stopping late in the evening at, uh, there was a rest area in Arkansas, like just the, like the, the information center in Arkansas. Across the across the state line in Arkansas, and immediately going to the information center. That's where we were. So we go in there, and uh, we have that power nap, you know, that he was talking about. And so uh, we do this little power nap, and the power nap is like two hours. You know, you pull in, you you know, you sit for two hours sleep for two hours, and I slept in the front seat, you know, leaned it back, conked out or whatever. I slept for about two hours. Finally, you know, on the window, it's time to go. Shit. So, we get up, and, you know, start off. And we, you know, we're driving along, driving along, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden, this, like, oil, like, starts piling up on the windshield, and I'm like, where is this, where's this oil coming from, you know? And, uh, so finally we pull off this Walmart. It turns out this guy would, this guy did pottery, but he also sold, sold roses. So he had the girls sell roses and he did the pottery. Uh, and that was apparently to get people into his, you know, in his place for pottery. And, uh, and that way he'd be able to sell them, you know, pottery or whatever. And so he's like, he uses coconut oil in his pottery. Well, his tub that was holding all of his coconut oil. Uh, broke, got cracked, and it was dumping all over the front windshield of the suburban. So we, we end up pulling to this Walmart, and I go in, and I get like, you know, I got oil all over the front, front of the suburban. It's hard to see. So I go in, and I get like a jug of, of uh, what was it? Windshield washer fluid, right? And I go back out of the truck, and I dump it all in the, in the uh, windshield washer bucket, and go to clean the windshield. And it dumped it all inside the dash and fried the radio. Fried the radio and the um, the cigarette lighter and, and just just 
you know, everything else worked. All the lights worked. All the, you know, the, I, I think the horn still works. Yeah, it does. And, and but it, and the radio and the cigarette lighter were like kaput. That was it. It was like no radio, no cigarette lighter. And so it has still doesn't have a radio. Still doesn't have a cigarette lighter. That works. And that was 2002. Is when it happened. So, uh, so we had to go on from there. Well, uh, it's, we're at about 10 minutes now. So, uh, I'm going to stop it here, and tomorrow I will include uh, the next part of the story. Anyway, that's it for today, and y'all keep the shiny side up. See you down the road. Get ready to go to California.